Okay. Hello everyone. This is just a quick video to introduce a new Kenshi series I will be doing. Uh, it will be called Independence. The idea behind it is basically I will be starting off as a solo character, uh, a wanderer in Shobatai, um, with only a thousand cats to my name. Well, we are going to have the following rule set. Okay, number one, we're not allowed to strip or disarm uh, any of our enemies we knock down to sell the weapons or even to use their armor. Uh, it is dishonorable to do so for us and we will not be doing it unless it is a boss or a leader of a faction. Uh, and that is because you cannot naturally get Mato weapons through crafting and that on your own and we will be uh, intentionally taking down these high value targets for their uh, weapons. Yeah. Number two, uh, no members in our groups can use the same weapons or main weapons at least. The secondary weapons like katanas and things like that are completely allowed. But as a main weapon, for example, if one character has a plank, uh, none of the others will be allowed to use a plank either. Okay, number three, uh, we're only allowed one of each workbench. So basically, if I have one leather crafting workbench, um, I'm only allowed to have one of those and only one person can work at that workbench. Uh, mining in that is open and people can uh, mine as many people as they want at a mine. Um, but this is just for balancing reasons so that I don't end up with an absolute ridiculous amount of wealth and things like that. Yeah. Uh, then no trade with the Holy Nation or the Shek Kingdom because they are part of our goals. We're going to be trying to take over and destroy the Holy Nation and Shek Kingdom. Um, and then gold, uh, rule number five is to manufacture as much of our own gear as possible. We want to be pretty much self-sustaining and uh, having everything made in our own city and through our own things. We do not want to be stealing weapons from anyone if possible. Um, yeah, that's it for the rules. Here's the goals of our series. We want to, number one, collect enough money through fighting and slavering. Or well, not slavering, slavery. Just uh, get a starting squad going and start a base. So, obviously not being able to loot weapons and armor to sell in the early game is going to make it uh, pretty hard to get starting money. And since we are in the United Cities anyway, uh, we will be able to participate in slavery fairly easy. Uh, obviously with my character being fairly uh, weak early on, uh, that will be a lot harder but it will be possible. Uh, okay, number two on our goals list is to build a base uh, to a state that it can function completely without any need to bring in external resources. So we'll need to have farm set up and things like that. Uh, we are going to be trying to uh, live in the Great Desert. I have never done that before, so it might be fairly difficult. I don't know. Uh, I. I'm not sure about the conditions there and what you can farm or not farm, but later in the game we'll be able to get hydroponics if needed. Till then we'll just have to buy food, which is going to be painful. Yeah, goal number three is to collect, to kill as many bosses as possible to collect their weapons to fight so that we can um, just be better. We just want to be the best we can be, get as many mental weapons as possible, and then yeah, uh, goal number four, uh, and the main goal of the series basically is to wipe out the cannibal tribes. We will be playing with uh, the cannibals expanded mod, so and, and reactive world. So the cannibals should be a fair challenge just to start with. Then we want to go for the holy nation, and then as we take over the holy nation, I believe the Shek kingdom will take over a lot of the holy nation territory, so they will become stronger. Yeah, um, then other than that, uh, let me just give a quick uh, mod rundown, I guess. Uh, I'll just show what the mods are here quickly. Uh, let me... Oh, that should not be there. Sorry. Yeah, so we're playing with Cannibals Expanded to make the Cannibals stronger, make it more of a challenge to get through it. Playing with Reactive World because that should um, increase our difficulty as well from what I understand from the mod. I haven't played with it before. 
Uh, I have got godsend bed healing two times, uh, purely because uh, watching someone sit there and heal for half an hour after every battle is just a bit much. But the other mods for it are generally a little OP, like four times, eight times feels a bit too fast, uh, and you just end up abusing the bags and that quite often. Um, I've got a nice map just to make it a bit easier to look around and things like that. I have shops have more money. Purely this is uh, a personal thing. I can't stand running around to every other shop. Uh, I like just going to one shop, sell all my stuff, pick up what I need and then have money like that. Um, running around massive backpacks full of stuff to multiple different places is just unpleasant for me. Flies are muted. Uh, no one likes the flies in the game. I don't know why it's there. Cut post cat looting. Um, this adds a minor amount of money to most of the enemies we find. Um, it seems like it would make it a lot easier, but it's genuinely not a lot. Like uh, most of the units we'll be knocking out and that will give us maybe 50 to 100 cats. Stronger group combat. Yep. Uh, we're going to make it hard. Uh, we're going to be having a lot of uh, very, very strong enemies. Uh, better shopping experience, um, just, yeah, makes it possible for us to set up a shop at our base. Uh, Legendary Okenshi, so this is a big mod that changes a lot of the characters and that in it. Uh, for example, one of the characters we're going to have to take out, um, uh, Holy Lord Phoenix, uh, in the Holy Nation, he will be very difficult to kill. Uh, it actually increases a lot of the major characters in the game to stats beyond what is normally possible in the game. Uh, so they will genuinely need multiple people to take them down. General modifications. This adds a lot of extra stuff to the game and I will be trying to explain what is added by this throughout the game. Uh, I have gotten used to it and it feels a lot better for a long series playthrough for me to play with general modifications. Fixing clipping issues just uh, helps your characters look a bit better with their um, armor and things like that. 256 recruitment limit is just purely we want a lot of people. Uh, especially if we're going to have a whole group at base and a whole group at outside attacking people. Uh, better vanilla item stacking, just a little bit more stacking. People can carry you're still restricted by weight, but items stack better on top of each other, so it, it just makes inventory management easier for me. But the squads and weapons, again, another mod to make it a little bit more difficult for us. The, the squads are slightly bigger, and uh, they will have a lot stronger weapons. Uh, this is part of why I wanted to do this playthrough without stealing weapons, because their weapons and armor of much higher quality, so they will... Um, yeah, they will have a really easy time. Uh, like, we, if we sold their weapons, we'd make way too much money. Better crop fences, just farm management stuff. Iron armor, iron fortress armor set. Okay, so this is a really decent plate armor set. It's very heavy, uh, and it is what I will be equipping a lot of my melee fighters with. Okay, then we have law friendly weapons packs, uh, volume 1, 2, and 3, all of them, and adventurers guild law friendly recruitment. This is a very expensive way to get new recruits and will be mostly used late game, uh, but it is there. Guaranteed slave recruits. We're going to be probably recruiting a fair amount of slaves, and that is what this is there for. Transparent UI just makes the game look better. And legendary weapons. Uh, there is a bunch of, um, basically better weapons on certain units and things like that. Um, and yeah, uh, it just gives a couple more, uh, unique NPCs really, really good weapons. And that's the idea. So yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed, uh, this video. I don't know if you really enjoyed it, it's just a uh, quick introduction to the series, mostly just for people that are going to be uh, joining the stream and would want to see how the game runs. Uh, I will be leaving the link to this video in the description of all the other videos I make in future. Yes, thank you for watching, I appreciate you guys, and I hope you enjoy the series.